Hey Washington Fish Questers, Blake here. I am joining you from historic Eagle Creek on historic Hood Canal in historic Washington. You know, although my channel's name is Washington Fish Quest, a majority of questions I receive might be about shell fishing. The one I received the most last year was inquiries on public uh, clam and oyster beaches, largely about like why they're closed, when they're open, that sort of thing. You know, when's a good tide, things like that. So that's the purpose of this video, is to kind of cover uh, uh, oysters and kind of, uh, I'm going to say sort of like steamer clams or vanilla clams, they're beaches. I'm going to break it into three parts. So specifically uh, tides, so number one tides, like when to go. Number two is finding a beach. And then number three will be when is that beach harvestable. I'm going to cover a lot of online resources in this video. I put a link to them all in the description. All right, the first thing to get you on some public clams and oysters is knowing the tides. So Fish and Wildlife has this tide map out here. I don't know if I can fit us both on the screen or not, but it's right there, <laughs> you know, that they put out. And it has the low daylight tides for 2023, I believe, based off of the NOAA uh, tide prediction calendar. And as you can see there, it starts in February. It's a great place to start. I write the lowest tides of the year on my calendar. And even though earlier in the year the tides aren't as good, that's when I do most of my oystering and clamming because oysters are just great in the winter. Uh, you know, as are manila clams. You know, they spawn later on in the year, you know, kind of like more around summer. So winter is great both for food safety because they don't get too hot, you know, so things like vivier aren't a big concern. And heck, it's something to do in the winter as well. So beyond that, I think it's good to get a tide app. And I'll tell you why it's important to, the, to today. Although I'm marrying this in February, I'm filming this in late January. Now here's, here's my tide app. It's called Washington Tide Now. And you might notice it's, it is in January, so it wasn't on that fish and wildlife calendar. You know, there were, the daylight low doesn't exist because the low is almost at 7 p.m. However, on the app, I can see the actual flow of the low tide. And it's going down, you can see there, probably about a plus two around 5 p.m. It's, it's uh, oh, I don't have my watch on, but <laughs> I think it's about 4.50 right now. So I got this nice window. I, I probably got maybe 20 minutes of light, maybe even 30 minutes of low light to shuck some moisture to get my 18. And that should not be a problem. So there you go. I'd say you got that, that. The, the fish and wildlife map there with the tide, not the map, but the tide times to start with and then download an app or you can get a book, you can get a paper book. That's how we used to all do it before apps, you know, and actually see what that tide looks like. And so here's a pro tip for you. If it's like today, I'm out here at, at, at Eagle Creek, you know, and I might have a, a plus two or plus two five in the daytime. I recommend shell fishing something like a creek, something that has a big flat on it. So I stopped by Lily Wap just to do this object lesson for you here. So Lily Wap is another beach I like to hit a lot, but it has a much greater slope. And look at this, I can't even see any keeper oysters. There's some small ones and that sort of thing. Out here in Eagle Creek, because it's this big giant flat, it's like if you can find one keeper oyster, you'll find thousands. Because if you find the one, then you have this big flat at the same depth. Look at that. This is probably a plus two five. And it is just showing oysters like crazy. All right, I'm gonna shuck my first oyster of 2023 here. Isn't this great? So this one's on a rock. You know, a lot of the time in these shallower areas, you'll you'll find them like that, just hanging out on a rock. And people walk right by them. You know, they feel, feel like it's an inconvenience. They're on a rock. I love the rocks. You know, protects my hand. If my if my blade slips, I'll probably hit the rock instead of my fingies. That sounds like a pretty sweet deal. All right. Whoop. There we go. There we go, first oyster of 2023. What do you think? Should I slurp it? I should, all right. Mm -hmm -hmm. I love me a hood canal oyster, so good. Now I can only harvest 17 though, because I counted against my limit. So all right, that's tides. I think it depends on the beach itself, how deep it is, whether it's a plus two is productive or a plus 1.5. I can see why Fish and Wildlife went with 1.5 just because that's the, the safer of the two metrics, because there's a lot of beaches where a plus two wouldn't quite do it. So now let's talk about finding those beaches uh, themselves. So here's another fish and wildlife document of popular oyster and clam beaches in Washington state. As you can see there, it has, I believe it's green, means it's open for clams and oysters, and blue means oysters only. That's what it's like here on Eagle Creek, it's oysters only most of the year. But then if you scroll down, so that's, that's all the popular beaches on page one. Page two is beaches that are closed for whatever reason. I'll get, in that, get into that in the last part of the video, uh, why the beaches close. So at any rate, uh, that's that's very helpful, but from there there's, there's even another place you can go that's even more specific. 
So there's actually this web page here where you can find uh, the public oysters and clam beaches. You can search by marine area, by county, by beach name. And uh, yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty fun. Since I'm here in marine area 12, let's go ahead and search uh, marine area 12. You know, kind of hood canal. So there we go. Uh, let's go ahead and click on this DNR beach. So this is kind of fun. Not all the beaches are that well known, you know, so it basically speculates this is probably a really good oyster beach. You know, I believe it. But not much is known about the clam and resources on that beach. But, you know, it tells you. tells you everything about it, the season, all that good stuff. And then let's go back, though, to a more common one. So here's Dozy Wallops. Yeah, this is Dozy Wallops, which I've done a lot of videos on, and it's a very popular beach. Yeah, so you see here it shows the, the clam season, you know, which is uh, very short, you know, and oysters are open year-round, you know, because it's just so dang productive. It's, it notes it's an excellent manila clam beach. Uh, yeah, so that's great. It has a little map there, too, because it's a very well-known beach. You can see the information there is, is much more plentiful. So this is a really good place to start as far as finding a beach goes. But as far as if you really, really want to search, uh, there's a tool that is kind of the granddaddy or the grandmama or gram whatever of them all and that is the DOH shellfish map. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so this is the DOH shellfish map. You're gonna to wanna to check that anytime you go shell fishing in general for a bivalve type shellfish, because three things can close a beach. One can kill you, one's illegal, one will make you really sick. <laughs> well, I take that back. Probably multiple can kill you. But one's marine biotoxins, that can kill you. For instance, paralytic shellfish poisoning or an extreme case of amnesic shellfish poisoning, those can both do you in. Uh, then. The second thing is pollution. So like extreme fecal chloroform over, over a certain limit, that sort of thing. So that can close the beach. Then the third is simply the season. That's the legal one. So this denotes all that. You know, if any of these factors are in play or not. If they're not, it's green. You're good to go. So let's go ahead and type in a... Let's go ahead and not type in, but go, go zoom in to where I am, Eagle Creek. As you can see there, it is open. There is no kind of health concerns or anything like that. It's open. No, you know, it's all good there. Uh, so, you know, we already know that because I'm here. So let's go ahead and go to one that's not open. Uh, let's see, just going a little south here. There we go. There's Potlatch. So Potlatch is, uh, it's closed and it's black and it has those like little red X's. So that just denotes it's a seasonal closure. It's not due to pollution or anything. It shows there when it opens up, it's got a two month season there for uh, oysters and clams. So there you go. Yeah, this is an incredibly helpful tool. It's uh, helped me a lot, you know, when you get out there to actually scout the beaches. This is this is what you want to use, you know. Between using that and those kind of, you know, getting a good tide guide and maybe doing some research with those fish and wildlife tools that I mentioned, you should be able to find uh, a nice public oyster or clam beach uh, to come shuck your own, you know, or rake your own in the case of manila clams. Well, I hope that was helpful. You can get out there and get your own oysters and clams. I got some shucking to do here before night falls. So I'll see you next time on Washington Shellfish Quest.